Hi, today I'm gonna to show you how I make one of my kids' all-time favorites, and mine too, because they get a whole ton of veggies into them and they think it's a treat. So I'm gonna show you how I make our cauliflower Alfredo sauce, and I make it in the Instapot. Um, I usually mix it with pasta and they just think it's the most delicious thing. Super simple, let me show you how I do that. Okay, so we're gonna need four bags of frozen cauliflower. You could use fresh, of course, but it's the equivalent of four 12 ounce bags. These are the Walmart ones. They're not even thawed right now. So it's like three pounds of broccoli, um, or broccoli, I'm sorry, cauliflower. Um, I have dried garlic, dried onion. I have black pepper and parsley. Any of those could be fresh. It's up to you. This is just to save myself time and I really find my kids don't care and it's much more time consuming if I use the fresh ingredients. So I used to make this in a much more convoluted way on the stovetop and the flavor is essentially the same when I make it very uh, quickly and simply in the Instapot. So that's now what I do. One and a half cups of water around that. If you want it thinner, more water. If you want it thicker, less water, of course. One bag of whole grain pasta. This is 16 ounces. I sometimes make this with whole grain um, ramen, an oil-free ramen that we sometimes use instead. Sometimes we'll even just eat the sauce plain. We just call it cauliflower soup, but they really like it when I make it with pasta. This is um, one that I will cook on the stovetop separately, just the pasta alone. I find in the Instapot, um, it just kind of seems like it disintegrates, so I don't make pasta in the Instapot. Um, I'll need nutritional yeast flakes. I try to get unfortified just because we don't need like doses and doses of um, B vitamins <laughs> generally. So I like to get foods unfortified if possible. And um, these are the flakes. If you use the powder, you'll have to use a lot less nutritional yeast because it's just kind of more concentrated. And then one bag of frozen peas that I'll throw in just at the end to help cool things and add one more vegetable and a flavor they love. So let's get started. I forgot to mention, we also will need a blender or an immersion blender. Personally, I choose the immersion blender and a little bit of lemon juice that we'll add at the end. Um, a food processor could even work, but you do really need to blend this in some way. You could probably skip the lemon juice if you, um, if you didn't have it on hand, but I think it just adds a teeny little bit more flavor to it, kind of tickles the salt taste buds without actually using salt. So we're just gonna pour in our one and a half cups of water. Oops, still in there. And then we just dump all four bags of cauliflower in to the pot. I especially love making this the night before I have um, a couple of nights where I need to work because it allows me just to throw these on the table and say make sure you eat that that's your vegetable for today instead of prepping fresh veggies because that is one of the things I usually prep fresh every day so if I know I'm going to be in a time crunch I'll make this the day before and that way the next two more or two days I have veggies for both of my boys. I split this batch into four equal containers, so it's enough vegetables for them to last me two days, which is great. After that, I put in a lot of garlic. This is what makes it. I used to measure, but I don't anymore. So it is probably close to two teaspoons of dried garlic. It's quite a lot. Do it to your tastes, but this is like, it really makes the sauce. I don't add this much garlic to anything else I make other than occasionally mashed potatoes, garlic mashed potatoes. Add a lot of dried onion. Um, you could again also use fresh or frozen. Quite a lot though. You'll notice there's not a ton of flavorings in this actually. So it's primarily the garlic, but it tastes like there's so much flavor. So I think it's really the garlic that makes it and the nutritional yeast, of course. Um, oops, I'm gonna actually use this side. Just a little sprinkle of black pepper. A little goes a long way. I've occasionally left it out, but you kind of miss that tiny little bit of a bite, for us at least. Use a bit of parsley, not too overloaded. Um, and then use roughly a half a cup of nutritional yeast flakes. So I'm going to show you this brand. This actually, see if I could show you that. 
It's pretty fine flakes, so I actually don't use the full half cup. If I'm using one where like the flakes are really big, it seems to be fluffier and lighter. So I do use closer to the full half cup. You'll kind of have to see if it feels, you know, too um, dense and creamy and cheesy to you, then just cut back. And likewise, if you don't feel like you have enough of that flavor, it's so to taste. I've used anywhere between a quarter cup, if it's a, the powder, the genuine powder, um, and then a half a cup at the most. So somewhere in between there, usually depending on the consistency. I've just learned this is about what we like. Dump that in, that's it. So let's turn this on. All right, if you've watched my videos, you know that I am a huge fan of the Instapot for the time savings. It's not so much that it cooks in less time, but you set it and forget it. So I just threw this meal together. I throw it together a lot faster when I'm not chatting and explaining what I'm doing. So I put this on, turn to the right, following the signs close, and I make sure this is set to sealing. It does not click or anything. You just have to turn it there as far as you can to the right so that it can come to pressure. I only use the pressure cook setting on my Instapot. I never bother with any of these other ones other than I've recently started making some yogurt. So then I'll use yogurt. But other than that is pressure cook only. So I do pressure cook. And this I'll probably do, I like to really, really cook it well. I'm sure you could do it for way less and it would probably turn out just fine too. But my habit is about 17, 18 minutes. There we go. And I just leave this, it's going to come to pressure, cook, and I'm gonna let it naturally pressure release. I'll probably be back in about an hour to add the lemon juice and puree it and cook up the pasta, show you how I throw it all together. All right, so this is the cauliflower Alfredo. You'll notice this says it finished cooking six minutes ago. So it'll probably be another 20-ish minutes until it pressure releases, then I'll puree it, add the peas and the lemon juice. But in the meantime, I know now is a good time probably to start my water boiling. So I'm just gonna bring this to a boil and then just cook this up according to, you know, the package directions. I think this takes 15 minutes and that way everything will be ready at once. Um, I wanted to show you this one neat little tool I have. Instead of um, draining this the typical way, right, in a strainer of some kind, this actually just clips onto your pot and I love that then you could just pour out the pot and it just catches all the pasta, drains the water out. And this is just, for me, a lot easier to deal with and clean. And then I only have this as the messy pot. This, like, you almost just have to rinse it with water if you do it right away. It gets the starch off. Um, so I just love this. I use it for when I cook beans as well. So I'm going to get started with that. Okay, so I have mistimed things. We're in a little bit of a rush to leave and see again. I love the Instapot because I could have left this sauce and I could have just waited till I got home to boil the pasta, but I was being impatient. So my pasta has four minutes left of boiling and I want the sauce to be ready at the same time so that the pasta doesn't congeal. I just right away mix it with the sauce. So this is probably very close to pressure releasing, but you can see the silver thing is still up and I cannot unlock it. Oh, see, look at that. It's ready to go. It's just about dropping. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, is probably, oh, there we go. It just pressure released. If not, what I would have done, I would have turned this to venting, covered it with a towel actually first, and then just let the last little bit pressure release. So anyway, it was, I guess, I thought, wow, it must be going soon. Usually 25 to 30 minutes, but this did have a lot of liquid in it. Okay, so I'm gonna uncover it, just show you. It's all mixed up right now. I'm going to add, well, I'll turn off this first of all. I'm going to add two tablespoons, roughly, of lemon juice, if I could get it open, to this. So just like, I sometimes measure this, but one, two. And I don't add it before because it seems to make it bitter. I don't know why. I'm not a chef, but that's what happens. And then I'm just going to take my immersion blender, put that together, and I just immediately blend it right in there. I'll show you what that looks like okay. when I'm done. So quickly, check out this beautiful consistency. I puree it until it's totally smooth. So good. And then I'm just going to pour in my bag of still frozen peas. That'll help cool it and not overcook the peas. And now my stove will be beeping here in one second. I'm going to go drain the pasta and then pour it directly in here and give it a good mix. Show you that when I'm done. 
Okay, so I actually am just stirring this right inside the Instapot insert, just again to save dishes. So I drain the pasta using that thing I showed you, the clip-on strainer. And then I just pour that drained pasta straight into the Instapot. And there it is. So this actually, because it's such a runny sauce, it almost just, um, it just turns really delicious. Even when it's chilled, it stays really nice and moist and wet. And um, the boys are very happy to eat it two days in a row. So I just divide it into four containers equally. Typically I hold the container over the pot so that I don't make a mess. Um, but we'll just do that. And I fill them literally to the brim. Each of these, I think they, I think it says they hold two or three cups or something, but I'll fill it completely to the brim to the point it sort of gets stuck on the little, little, little bit. Um, and that'll be their boys' vegetables, which like, if you think about it, right, you're offering your kids pasta and that counts as their vegetable for the day. So they're eating, you know, um, one 12 ounce bag of cauliflower and a quarter bag of peas every day when they eat a container like this. So, and they think it's a, huge treat. They just love it. So I hope this helps you to enjoy cauliflower, enjoy your vegetables, and just honestly have a really delicious sauce um, or soup. I, I really do enjoy eating it simply as a soup too. If you found this helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. Leave a comment below if you've tried a recipe similar to this or if you tried the recipe and you enjoy it.